ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the I'm a Professional, I Swear, podcast. Today I'm joined with Alex and Brandon from Star Blazer. If you guys don't know, it's an awesome uh, VR game. It's an R- Basically, it would be classified as an RTS, right? I'm not mistaken there. I always, I've always, i always been calling yeah. it an RTS. Okay, real-time strategy. Good. Uh, and today we're going to talk about their journey as game devs uh, to give you guys a little, little insight in that industry because for so far it's just been me and a bunch of nerds. So uh, anyways, <laughs> some real professionals this time. <laughs> <laughs> So I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> Title of the podcast, I'm a professional, I swear. <laughs> so recently I saw, though, you guys changed your name to Star Arcade from Star Blazer. Because I remember all your handles and everything with Star Blazer, and you guys actually made the the studio into Star Arcade. Is that true? Yeah, correct. So originally the game is called Star Blazer, and... I guess a lot of people knew us as the Star Blazer team, and so that was more or less the branding of the studio, but we realized we really wanted to create a separate brand identity so that as we branch off into other IP and properties, uh, we have a company that produces these games, and then Star K- Star Blazer can be an individual game. So now Starcade Arcade is our official company name. Starcade Arcade, I like it, I like it. Yeah, it's got a ring. So how did you guys start? Uh, how did you guys start making the game? Like, where did you guys meet in college? Did you? Oh, something broke. You can tell the story, Alexander. Okay. okay. <laughs> I didn't know we were taking turns. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's, fine. It's, it's whatever you guys want. Two can tell the story better, and this one you can. <laughs> <laughs> debatable, debatable. Yeah, actually, we started off just as friends. Brandon had a VR headset that he actually worked with it quite a bit at work. And uh, we both worked at the same place and we became friends, uh, I think over an inappropriate joke, actually. (laughs) There was a large group of people and I made a joke that was vastly inappropriate and Brandon's the only person in the group who laughed. And immediately I like looked across and I was like, he and I are gonna be friends. (laughs) (laughs) And so that's how we like first met each other. But then we got started on the development because he actually introduced me to VR and um, it was a whole lot of fun playing it. But as we were playing the different games, um, we were looking at it and we felt like maybe the games we wanted to play weren't on the market yet. And so we just said, you know what, let's start this journey of let's see if we can make our own games We make the games that we'd want to play. And specifically like Star Blazer, we didn't see anything space, you know, strategy games in VR. And yet that's immediately what we wanted to do when we put on a VR headset was to be able to control ships and, you know, be this omniscient space commander and so we, we just started from there um it started off as a hobby and a passion project and then it's grown from there to something that we said no this is really what we want to do and so we we keep going just because the passion grows the more we get into it yep that's cool that's cool so do you guys both work on developing does one do marketing the other develops is it- yes so what I try to do is I try to have Alexander um, spend as much time as he can do coding. So whatever is not that, I try to take off his plate so he doesn't have to be distracted. You know, since we're literally two people, it's really hard <laughs> to do a lot of things. So we have to wear multiple hats. Um, but if Alexander can wear like the ultimate, you know, lead dev hat, um, that's the most important hat. So I try to just like deal with socials, you know, marketing, reach out, um, everything like that. And, so, and I, I, Alexander, of course, of course, does way more than just dev right. work. Like there's a lot of stuff regardless, but, you know, conversations he needs to have. It's so funny because, uh, you know, I do most of the social engagements. I do most of like all our social media. Everyone, I think, assumes they're talking to him, but they're actually <laughs> talking to me. And then we get on a call like with a partner and they're like, oh, is Alexander coming? I'm like, I, I've been working on this too for three yeah. years. Like he's not the only person. <laughs> Everyone just wants to talk to Alexander. I've come to terms with it. <laughs> it cracks me up though. It's funny. Yeah. Brandon's the great buffer. It, you know, it's funny. Even this morning I sent Brandon a message over Slack and I was like, Hey, I know I'm behind. I got to like email these four people. I was coding all morning and he was like, doesn't matter. Coding's the most important thing. <laughs> and so that is kind of how we handle it. I mean, that's a, that's a good way to look at it. You, you, prioritize your product over necessarily engaging because what's the point in engaging if you have nothing to give them also yeah coding, absolutely coding is stupid and it, yeah yeah um 
I actually went to there's an online class. It's really cool if anybody's interested in like entrepreneurship. It's startup school online. And one of the things that they said in this class was like the most important place to spend your time is working on your product or talking to customers. And so I think Brandon handles the talking to customers and then I handle working on the product and we just try to eliminate all their distractions. Yeah. So it has, um, oh God, I can't say that. Um, <laughs> I think you can say it. No, you can. no YouTube no? is straight up like, I'm, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, oh. I'm gonna have to edit that, with, let's see. <laughs> Rewind. Uh, five minutes, three as, minutes. Okay. as the current world situation. <laughs> there we go. Um, so as the current world stay at home and sleep in bed all day situation, um, affected your guys' productivity in any way? I think it's actually great because we don't have commutes to work anymore. Uh, we've been working from home and I don't know if you know this, but we're not full-time indie game devs. I mean, we'd love to be, but we're still in the bootstrapping phase where our full-time jobs pay for the dream. And so that means we do have full-time jobs that we have to do during the day. But for us, I love the fact that now I get an additional one to two hours every day because I'm not commuting, I'm not driving. Um, so it's just more hours in the morning and more hours in the evening that we can focus on Starcade, And that's actually helped us a lot. Have you guys planned on going to any conventions if they're still open or have you guys gone to conventions before during this crisis? How was that experience? Yeah, so right now, this year, we're going to no conventions. We decided we'll try to pick up uh, conventions next year and try to do like a circuit. However, in February, we actually went to Taiwan for Taipei Game Show, which was an interesting experience. And that's when it started getting a little heated in that region. We get off the plane, like literally we get off a plane after like a 16 hour plane ride. We check our phones and they're like, Taipei game show is closed. And like, we're not doing it, sorry. And we're like, like literally just got off a 16 hour flight and that's the first email <laughs> that comes in. And then of course, that's when it's like, you know, we're gonna start shutting down travel to specific regions. So like that, we literally get off the plane and we literally have to walk to the booth and be like, how do we get back to the States? And then when we got to the States, we actually got put on quarantine for two weeks before everyone else got put on quarantine. Um, so it was a super interesting experience. Uh, they were just like, look at these two nerds. Quarantine, quick. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That was pretty funny. Uh, hey, yeah, and we're, we're, we're laughing now because at the time everybody was like, oh my gosh, two weeks quarantine. What was that like, you know? How were you able to not leave your apartment for two weeks? And of course, <laughs> bro, I've been no, in, every, everybody knows what that's like. I've been quarantined yeah. in my house for like a month. It's driving me crazy. <laughs> yeah, I guess this is like month three or four for us. Yeah. Yeah, I was working in construction before this. Um, uh -huh. and we worked right through the pandemic. We didn't give a shit. I mean, we gave a shit, yeah. but we didn't give a shit. Like, we just kept going yeah. through. And then shit went down and a lot of us left. So. Oh, wow. That's crazy. That was about a month ago. <laughs> <laughs> Been here ever since. Um <laughs> Okay, what about like, so when you guys are first starting out, what are the things that you guys did that would enable you to go to conventions and do the whole circuit? Yeah, when we first started, we started local. Uh, that's just the easiest way to do it. If you look at the first convention that we went to, we went to PAX South, which is in San Antonio. So I'm based in Houston. He's in Seattle. And so Brandon came down, but then he just came to Houston for one of his regular visits and trips. And then we just loaded everything up in a car, um, friends, TVs, <laughs> PCs, and drove out to San Antonio because <laughs> that was the easiest way to do it, right? And that's where you got to start. But then I guess we, we took progressive steps further and further. And I think part of the thing that helped is... Um, getting the additional support and traction from the conventions themselves. So if I look at when we started with PAX, I mean, we paid for everything, booth, admission, you know, getting in, <laughs> wait list. <laughs> but then towards the end, um, the conventions were actually asking us to come or, you know, we were being a part of the indie showcase. So if I look at like South Korea, which is crazy, that's a little bit further than San Antonio. Um, that's a lot easier because actually they 
they provided for the entire booth as a part of their indie showcase and tickets to the show. So it's not like, I mean, we just had to get there. And once you know you cover those expenses, um, we were able to figure out how to get there pretty cheap. And yeah. I think same for Taiwan, Taipei Game Show actually met us at G-Star in South Korea and then asked if we'd come to Taipei Game Show. We said, absolutely. And so in that case, you know, again, it's going to be very, very affordable as, as a part of their booth setup. That's cool. So you start off local San Antonio, represent, let's go. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just moved here like three months ago. So. I'm, oh, nice. Yeah, go to Alamo I, Cafe. Great case. Have, well, maybe don't go there. Pick up now. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I went there when we first moved back at the beginning of February. Uh, now I've pretty much ordered through favor like every single restaurant I can think of. I've got <laughs> I just listed yeah. all the restaurants near me. And because favor doesn't care where you order from, I was like, here, 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 here. I've had Lebanese, African. I mean, it's just. Food's nice. Good. It's good. <laughs> Cultural experience. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And African food, like their stew, their beef stew is. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> I'm gonna gain a few pounds. Um, okay. <laughs> Worth it. <laughs> I mean, it's better than convention food. This thing about like packs out the last. Oh week. yeah. Um, yeah. Why am I paying five dollars for a pizza pizza? And it's not Pax's fault. It's the convention center that does the food. Yeah. Um, were you guys there last and- this year? No, because you were. We did no. no packs this year. We were yeah. going to, and then we pulled out. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, this year they had there was a company that did um, soda, like old school fashioned soda, and they weren't allowed to sell any of their soda because the convention center didn't want any competition. Wow. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's so they funny. could only sell. They can only give out samples, and then they can only sell their mugs, which are really cool metal mugs. Um, I don't. I have two of them. I just don't know where they are. And I, right now they're in the kitchen somewhere. But um, they were giving out samples. They're like, okay, cool. We won't sell anything. We'll just sell mugs. Well, then the convention centers told them to stop selling samples. Oh gosh. But I tell you what, the food in South Korea was great. We had Korean barbecue like every night. I seriously came back five pounds heavier. <laughs> I, yeah, I yeah. was about to ask. So like, other convention centers better? Um, so I've been wanting to go to South Korea. It's what is it like? Is it as cool as everyone says it is? Yeah, yeah, I, I yeah. definitely enjoyed it a lot. Um, it's it's one of the countries where it is a little bit harder to get around if you don't know the language. I think some are very easy to navigate. South Korea, it, it helps if you have friends and those that that can help you get around or make sure you, you download their different apps. A yep. neighbor and things like that so that you can at least find your way with the gps but once you overcome that i mean the food is incredible seriously it's amazing it's yeah like the main most important thing of any place is how it's your food <laughs> yeah huge huge criteria for a location yeah I, but yeah, nightlife I is pretty fun too yeah nightlife yeah i was gonna say nightlife is pretty fun. <laughs> yeah food and nightlife those are our two criteria <laughs> <laughs> Every we went to this yeah the convention was so cool we went to this really cool after party at a museum and it was just like the floor was like an lcd screen the wall was and they had like a dj playing to like crazy visuals like beneath you above you like on the sides it was and yeah. it was free we just like it was so cool it was a really so cool experience <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, was, it was incredible That's definitely awesome. once in a lifetime experience for sure so what, at what point would you guys go full time with game development? What is like your criteria for that? Yeah, I would say that's an ongoing question. Um, I don't think we know the answer to that. You know, we, we try to put an objective decision making to it. Uh, I've heard different things, such as like, well, if you make as much on the game as you do in your full-time job then that's when you should quit i hear some people are like go all in and then i hear some people that say no no no, keep the full-time job and support it you know health benefits and stuff like that and i don't know it, it's it's something we still struggle with i think for us there has to be significant traction where we know we would have enough of a runway uh, regardless of the income streams that if at the end of that we could see ourselves actually making enough to eat 
Yeah, it's a it's a <laughs> good question, and it's a interesting question. I think in this time and moment in everyone's life, I think things are changing really rapidly in a weird way that we've obviously never experienced before. So I mean, we talk about it. I think more recently than we ever have before because it's just like it's just a it's an interesting time to be alive. And the cool thing is, a lot of people I think are questioning what makes them happy, what do they enjoy doing, and then. You know, it's just interesting. Yeah, I think um, the quote "American Dream." I talk about this a lot with friends. Is it's dead? The quote "American Dream" was the dad works, you know, or the head of the household, however you want to go about it, works a upper middle class job that pays really well to where the other person doesn't necessarily have to work. And but the problem is that no one really likes those kind of jobs. If you look at upper middle class jobs their manager jobs their advisory jobs their jobs that don't really allow a lot of creativity creativity is either in the engineering behind it which is not always upper middle class paying and of course on the very top right the grand creatives so i think our generation and everyone today is just like we're kind of sick and tired of that and we just want to make shit and be able to live we don't even need it like an insane lifestyle you know, most of the streamers I talk to and creators I talk to, that's it. They're like, I don't need a Lamborghini. I don't need, you know, a hype house. All I want to be able to do is just this full time. I think that's what a lot of people are striving towards. It's just like, I don't need a Lamborghini. I mean, I would like a Lamborghini. Don't get me wrong. You know, I'd like to be able to sure. dump thirty, dollars $40,000 into my truck. Uh, <laughs> you know? But I think that's where a lot of people are going towards. They just want to be able to sustain their lives and do what they love at the same time which yeah i i 100 agree and I, I would say one of the best feelings we ever experienced was that first convention we mentioned pack south was our first convention and i'll never forget that feeling of standing in this convention showing people that have never seen what you've worked on for so long for you know for the first time and them loving and enjoying it and you knowing is something that you created and that feeling that like high was so addictive like <laughs> after we felt that we, we were like this is all we want <laughs> this is like yeah. this joy of pure creation and then putting it out there and seeing other people enjoy it uh i've never felt anything better Brandon got married, yeah. so maybe he has but <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> <laughs> so yeah yeah brandon is helping feel something more <laughs> um what year was your first convention which which pax was that uh 18 19 when it, really it, it would have been 19 I think 19, that, 19 that was yeah. that, that was the pax that i i saw you guys at yep yeah holy okay. shit that, that was, was the first, first convention yeah <laughs> yeah our first <laughs> Yeah. Also, the game's come a long way since then. Yeah, yeah I can move around now without getting freaking the fuck out. I know, yeah. When yeah. I played the demo, uh, I, I remember thinking, okay, this can't be that hard. I've just played a bunch of VR games. For the life of me, I couldn't figure out how to like just move to a spot, look around, and control ships. Yeah. Uh, because I would get stuck at the part where you select a ship and then you select an endpoint. Well, it's more of like I just wanted it to go like six feet in front of me. And the next thing you know, I'm clicking like on the edge of the map. I was so yeah. confused, but for some reason, I was like, "This is like, what is it? Eden's game? Um, Ender's game? Ender's oh, game? Yeah, Ender's game. Yeah. I'm like this is Ender's game. This is literally it. I need this in my life. So yeah, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> we appreciate the graciousness of our fans who saw the early demo and still <laughs> saw the potential because we've gone back and looked at it since then and been like, "Oh my gosh." Yeah. yeah. How did people give us any credibility? I mean, one, we've we've come a long yeah. way. One map, one map, one headset. Now we're UX several. was brutal. You, oh my gosh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, was, yeah. We've learned a lot. It was great. Um, one thing I, I definitely like how I was able to see past the just insane controls at first. I'm not like shitting on you. Like I get it's an early game, right? Um, yeah was just like the concept of being able to be in space right and controlling ships like that that ender's game feel and then just seeing your guys enthusiasm behind it like it wasn't like some other booths where they're like oh hi what's up 
right? No, Yu-Gi-Oh! was like, here, try this. Slap it on your face. <laughs> that's awesome. That's actually, yeah. you no, know, that, that's good feedback. Yeah, yeah. good feedback. Um, I don't know, I fell in love with the booth, so I just kept coming back for some reason. I, for a while, I was like, I'm being awkward. I'm just going to leave. <laughs> no, we oh, loved no, it. No, it's, it's great, yeah. I mean, yeah, it was the people like you that made that convention for us, and that was the catalyst that, I mean, if I look at, like, if I was to plot the development, it spiked after that convention because we had so much energy, so much support and hype. Uh, it was a defining moment for us. And so it was people like you that really helped make it special and then really helped us get to the part where we're at now. Which is, like, an awesome game. I do have one request <laughs> for a map. I'm just going to throw this out there now I have this chance. We need, like, a outer space asteroids map. Ah. Uh, just saying. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think someone else asked for a space map to me not too long ago. Yeah, yeah. that's the other thing is, yeah, 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 we should. I So a lot of people don't know this, but we, I think I've read every piece of feedback um, and heard everything. And I think some people get nervous saying what they want, but like, we don't get mad. We're just like, yeah, like we'll think about it and we'll talk about it. Like we want the feedback. We want to make a good game. We don't want to just like pose our you know, ears and our eyes and be like, no, this is what the direction we want to go. I mean, we like not, that feedback. I'm, I'm not going to name any studios. I want to so bad, but no. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, no for, no, for us, the limitation, like there's never any self pride, <laughs> to be honest. Um, I mean, there's so many parts of the game where I just went backslash asterisk comment out the whole line of code and like all right let's redo this <laughs> because this doesn't work clearly yeah. um and we're, we're like we're good with that feedback because at the end of the day we've got to pivot and and make something that people love yeah. and and it's a delighter for us like when we make something and then the back of our mind we know somebody suggested it like as we're kind of feature this morning of where you can actually place the waypoints directly horizontal from the ship because i think a lot of people have complained about how it's either pointing at the ground or the floor or, or the wall behind it and it's something a lot of people have requested and i was like finally able to figure out the ux for it but as i was coding it i'm actually thinking of the people specifically in discord who have talked about this how it would work and it's rewarding that's cool yeah that's really cool and i'm sure we're all really happy about that one feature well, that's the, yeah. the great thing too is like as a community we just get excited like yes it's working you know it's going forward because we want to see it succeed too i know i'm fanboying it fanboying fanboying english it's hard um fanboying <laughs> fan we appreciate it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um so what are some like i guess what are some problems that you guys ran into in developing the game for yourself that the general public wouldn't really know about any like legal issues any you know other things that are like behind the scenes because a lot of times when we see it from our perspective it's like oh they just ran out of money but they never really explained like okay why did that happen so is there any like situations that you guys ran into that we can delve into um just for like other i like, god damn it i'm rambling i'm a professional i swear welcome to the podcast <laughs> <laughs> that's the title and what i'm trying yeah. to get out of my head is what are some issues that you guys run into that not a lot of people know about yeah we i would say I don't know if Brian is thinking of an answer. I'd say the most prevalent one is probably pretty obvious. Uh, it's actually not the running out of money. That's not as big of a problem. I mean, not that you know we've got we're sitting on loads of money. Um, but the <laughs> biggest problem for us was really the time because we kind of believe we can create anything, and so much can be created from scratch. I mean, Virus Popper, the second game we made. I mean, that was made with a lot of old assets that we had kind of rehashing. And honestly, having no money is an advantage in, in my mind because it makes you get creative on how to use what you do have. Um, yeah. If you have more money, you end up just wasting it. So for us, you know, you can get creative without money, but time is always the biggest delimiter because again, I, I can code for three hours, but then I've got to go to the full-time job for eight to 10 and that's just a, an energy and a, and a time sink that I th I'm sure every part-time indie dev has to deal with. We've had a couple interesting setbacks, though. Like, most people wouldn't know that my apartment was struck by lightning and caught on fire and <laughs> destroyed all my VR equipment one day. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. It was Memorial Day, I guess, two years ago? Maybe it was three years ago. A part, uh, um, lightning strike directly hit my apartment. It hit the air conditioning duct which burned up the entire attic 
and like lit my apartment on fire. It also just electrical surge just blew all electronics in my house, like everything, all oh. electronics. <laughs> and I'm a developer, so that's a bad thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so there was that setback of like, well, there are going to be no updates this week because I'm moving to a new <laughs> apartment that doesn't have burnt walls. <laughs> Also, replacing computer headsets, also, hard right. drives. Yeah, nice. it's like the last thing we needed. Uh, I think there's two that are really small. Um, Alexander's PC is really, really good. Like, it's just an amazing PC. And I don't think we realized how great the specs of that PC were until we released like Starblazer, like in like way, way, way back when we're like. Oh, this does not work for like most computers because he would never yeah. run into lag issues because mm -hmm. his computer could handle it. But like pretty much any normal PC just like blew up. So that was an <laughs> <Yeah>. interesting <laughs> thing that we found out way too late <laughs> in the release. Um, Very true. I think a lot of we, uh, a lot of we realized that we didn't understand Steam's algorithm the way we should have um early on so there's been a lot of catching up just learning how to actually publish a game on these different developer um stores uh and i think the one that we 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 didn't it wasn't an issue but we talked a lot about is actually releasing virus popper mm, um, yeah we didn't know how people were going to take it um so i think like we didn't want people to think we were taking advantage of the situation you know, because we released a game that was free, that was just educational. I mean, we literally make you wash your hands for 20 seconds before you can even play. But, you know, nowadays anyone can take something you make and just talk about half of it and just you're just done. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of conversations we had about even publishing that game. So cancel I think those culture are... applies to indie devs too. Damn. I think cancel culture oh, yeah. applies to everyone. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, I just, I just never thought about it in a way like a dev you know, would get in a lot of trouble. Usually it's just like, oh shit, wrong thing. And then they move on, but wow. Yeah, no, was... yeah. It was something like we really had to debate. I mean, I guess you're right. Like if you're an individual, like an individual posting on a forum, apparently you can say whatever you want. But like once you have any type of reputation and I'd say at this point, you know, it's small, but we do have a reputation in the VR market. Um, there's always that fear that, you know, you make the one mistake and for us, we really felt like Virus Popper was something that was good, that we wanted to do to help. Um, but there was a bit of fear of, you know, are people going to take this the wrong way, you know, be offended or, you know, misunderstand our intentions. Yeah. And, and, and I would say even the stores worked really closely with us to make sure like our, what we were communicating through the game wasn't taking advantage of anything like HCC was like you need to add these things oculus was like you can lean a little more into like the safety aspect so i mean i think everyone was a little nervous but like we all knew it was good and then it got out and then you know it went really well and it got lots of downloads we were pretty stoked about and so we we talked about it quite a bit though <laughs> that's cool we were definitely nervous yeah that's, that's crazy man it, it puts it into perspective of like just today's and i wouldn't say like people are always upset but just more people are a lot more sensitive about things and people can take things out of out of context like i said they yeah. they would take half of what you have and turn into something else even though it wasn't because it was a great game it's just you can't believe you have to wash your hands or you're just going like this <laughs> Yeah. yeah. For, for 20 seconds. Yeah. 20, 20 seconds. And in game, it looks fine, but when you, someone walks in on you doing this. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I love it. Um... Actually, because we watch all the I watch all the YouTube videos, and it's actually so funny because you see the headset, usually what people are doing, but then you'll see the camera, what they're actually doing. And it's so funny watching them, like, with their controllers, wash their hands for 20 seconds. <laughs> That's funny. What I'm doing. Yeah. That's great. And they even lean into it. That's like the funniest part. Like that's what I love about virtual reality. You actually see them leaning like they were actually in front of a sink, actually washing their hands. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Best part, definitely. Is there a reason you guys chose VR over standard indie game development? Or I guess 2D, 3D, yeah, 3D development? Uh, I was just going to say, I think we, me and Alexander, love um, new technology right and so like 
getting into VR was more about like, hey, let's learn this new technology and see what we can do with it. And so like, we always want to be on like cutting edge things or like learn from it or try something crazy. And so I think that's what got us into VR. Have you guys um, tried the new treadmills for VR? We have not. Mm, I have not. Yeah. yeah. You should. Should it's it's an experience. <laughs> It's... Like the Omni, for instance, is mm -hmm. that what you used? Yeah, um, I got to try it out, and then now they're I think they're developing one that is like very small form factor that you can just throw in your living room. And oh, yeah, that's great. I, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. I was Maybe like... we should reach out to them. Because <laughs> if I could just Actually, walk around in game, that'd be great. Did they come back? If they didn't come back, I'm gonna go scream at them. <laughs> yeah, I think I reached out a while back, but I think this is a different company. No, oh, it's, okay. yeah. it's not Omni, it's something else. I can't oh, gotcha. Names. No, I haven't talked to them yet. But we should. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's Bro. like... They... Obviously, like, right, they, they work with developers to make it, but just the simple fact of the matter is that, like, now I can work out properly and <laughs> never leave my room? Mint. It's perfect. Yeah, we especially need that right now. <laughs> so how would that work, though? Like, let's throw that into example. How would you... When you contact somebody else to work with their product... What is like the conversation like? Well, um, you always have to start with the general baseline of you got to reach out. The worst they can do is ignore you. <laughs> and then the second worst they can do is say no. And then like once you establish that, then you remove the fear of reaching out. Sorry, you were going to say, Brandon? Oh, I was actually thinking, I was like, is the worst thing they could say is no? <laughs> they could say yes and then do nothing with it. They could say yes. You build the SDK. You do it, and then they're like, "Oh, never mind. We're not going to market you anymore." That is. Oh, you're right. Word. That that, that did happen word. to us. We won't say who it was, but no. that did happen. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. We like we took a week to to do their STK, and then uh, it just like fell through on their side. We're like, "Oh, yeah. thanks." Cool. But in VR, we've done a lot of partnerships. We like lives a, a fantastic one. We every time we make a new game, we make sure to incorporate their STK into it, so people can shoot our games in mixed reality um and we have some more i think planned and so uh, usually it's just a really and since vr is so small it's just really just like hey we have a vr game and you have a thing that's really cool with vr do you want to work together and they're like yeah of course why would we not and then it usually goes from there we've only had one bad experience um but there's always i don't know <laughs> it's yeah <laughs> yeah it's fucked up man well, so <laughs> What do you guys have planned for the future? Like, where do you guys want to be in five years? <laughs> well, we've pictured our game studio. I have an office, all white furniture, and <laughs> just really sleek, elegant design. Brandon has an office. It's all black. Maybe there's a few lava lamps. <laughs> <laughs> so heaven and hell, eh? Yeah. yeah. Very much. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, and then... We just, yeah, we have that joy of just working on what we want to create. And for us, I would say the longer term vision is we see Star Blazer as the entry point into a larger universe. We, we've hinted that in Virus Popper, because even though it's a game about virus and washing your hands, um, there's a lot of nods that it's in the Star Blazer universe. You know, if you look behind you, there's a medic. If you look to your left, there's Orbit and Inkers in the background you know, these characters. And we actually plan to do that for all of our games. So even as we discuss different titles, they may be far out there in genre and concept, but they still find a way to fit into this universe we're creating. And so we kind of want to create this canon around it where all of the titles very much so have a Starcade Arcade look and feel. And, you know, even when we work on these other games, it's still going to feel like it's all part of the same family. And I think that gets us excited more than anything else. Dude, yeah. all the Easter eggs. Oh, my God. Yes. Oh, my God. So many. Yeah. Actually, there's a lot. And I don't think people, you know, I don't think we've been on the scene long enough. And people don't. Yeah, there's so many Easter eggs and even Star Blazer that people don't even realize. Even in Virus Popper and, you know, other stuff. I don't you know, think a lot of us about. knew that there were going to be Easter eggs at all. No, I have okay. <laughs> well, I have a few things to do. Um, <laughs> yeah, find all these eggs because it's stupid, addicting, and it's weird, and it's annoying. Like, <laughs> awesome. I've been, I've been like, I used to play a lot of Call of Duty Zombies, 
and the number one requirement before you even get to getting to enjoy the map was to do the easter egg first mm. fuck enjoying the map fuck having a good time you have to find the easter eggs then you can enjoy yep. the map um, yeah <laughs> so. that's true that's true yeah well i apologize because next patch we un we do the achievements and so if you're an achievement hunter you've got some work ahead of you <laughs> yeah i think that's interesting i didn't realize how many types of i think we're still learning a, a ton right and then i didn't realize that there's just like different types of gamers obviously this sounds so obvious when i say it but like i don't think we understand it until like it happens like achievement hunters i knew it was a thing but not really now we know it's a thing like we had achievements for virus popper and we definitely had someone like getting really up not upset but there's like how do i get the last one they just needed one more oh, and yeah. they were like it's very much like an easter egg yeah they're like hounding us like how do i get this last one i'm just like do we tell them do we just like i don't know what to do i feel bad because i didn't you know, ca you, know you caved thing. right you ended up telling I them i caved i yeah. caved he just felt so bad. I felt so bad. No, you have to play with their minds and let them go insane. <laughs> yeah, I, I think one of the most prevalent Easter eggs in Star Blazer is the number of places that Inker shows up. And there is an achievement to find all of the Inkers that we hit in the game. And Brandy, you better not cave because... <laughs> I'm not going to cave. I'm not going to cave. Because for sure there's one that I think people have had a hard time finding. Yeah, for sure. I'm gonna. Oh, dude! Now I'm just thinking about like, oh, <laughs> oh my god, all the places are like, oh, what's up with that spot? And like, when you go to build your fleet, like it's a giant open area, and I'm like, what if I could just jump over here and look? Um... <laughs> I have thought about that, like putting something out down there. Like go and then... now, now I can't do it. Actually, at one point we had this like giant bruiser that that flew by. And I was working on this very elaborate Easter egg where you could jump on top of the bruiser as it flew <laughs> by and then it would take you someplace else. I was like, I'm not even going to tell Brandon about this. <laughs> Why did you stop? That's amazing. <laughs> Dude, but the bruiser has gone now because the sense of scale was off. So, yeah. Uh, okay. okay. Yeah. So in five years, you guys hope to be a full-time studio with heaven and hell and the bullpen being pur purgatory. <laughs> got it um <laughs> nailed it <laughs> nailed it around the head so i think in five years i want my own little team of like a designer and an engineer who i can just be like go do this crazy thing i just want to see how it does um because i think I, I my personality is like i just want to try crazy things and if they don't work okay we learn something and if not you know like if it did well it's like cool all right next project <laughs> um so that's where i would love to just have you know where me and alexander can be even faster than you know we are well i mean you guys are, for a two-man team you guys are doing amazing like trust me um it's <laughs> much much better than i expected because like not gonna lie when i first saw it i was like okay this is probably gonna be like a two three four year project where you know after the four years it's gonna be like a really good game no nah, it was just took you like what six months like yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, the best news like, i've heard all day <laughs> yeah well, Alexander got we like eighteen patches out. Like he was cranking out a new patch every two weeks. Like like he said, after Pack South, it's just been like, like yeah, yeah. Dang. yeah. Don't, don't. I mean, for us, we put a lot of time pressure on ourselves. I mean, I specifically remember a point, I guess last holiday season, where I was going like, oh, we gotta get this stuff out, and then Brandon goes, do you realize that we've posted a patch every week for the past five weeks? And then, like he went over all the stuff we included, and I mean. But even still, like, we just want to go as fast as we can. And when, you know, we love playing games ourselves, right? And one of our pet peeves is when there's a game out there that is just stagnant and the studio is not doing anything with it. And we don't want to be that kind of studio. You know, we always want to be working and pushing out something. So we set a high bar for ourselves. That's good. That's good. Push it. Just don't burn yourselves out, please. Um, it's... <laughs> we'll, we'll just respawn. Okay. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> pass out in the VR headset, and then you gotta come to the UK, and then all of a sudden you just appear right behind him. Yeah. yeah I think the burnout comment is super interesting. I think, you know, since we have this dream and ambition, it's I think it's hard. Like, there's moments where we're definitely tired. Uh, you know, like because we do like we love Star Blazer, but we also want to do more creative, like different creative projects. And so I think. It's less burnout on like doing VR and being in the space and doing that. It's more like burnout on like, oh, we're still working on this one specific IP when we want to work on a different IP. 
Um, so burnout can show itself in different ways, I think. Yeah, no, I mean, if you look at it just from a human perspective, like a human perspective, Jesus. <laughs> from someone no, who's that's not... a good. That's a good quote. That's a good way to say it. Like from a human perspective, it's like, you know, when they say, "Oh, let me just kick back and have a beer," you know, that's avoiding burnout. Um, yeah. yeah. And the, every creator in general has gone through it, where they've sat down. And they're like, "Oh, I'm not, I'm not healthy. <laughs> I need to like relax yeah. um, and take a week off." But like it, it, when they say take a week off, you can also look at it like, "Okay, I'm just going to cut down my workflow because." For example, I would get home from work, stream, work on videos, then go to bed at like one, two in the morning. And then I was like, okay, let me cut it down. Let me just come home one day and not do anything. And the next day, normal schedule and take a day off. Uh, so there's a lot of different ways of looking at it, especially for newer creators and developers. Like just, just look at your schedule, plan things out to get them done in time. Don't burn yourself out because it sucks. And it shows up, and like you said, so many different ways to where you're like, I don't want to do this anymore. And then, you know, you regret it later. Piece of advice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's careful. We're not very good at that, but. Yeah. You have a community that I think will get on your ass <laughs> if you burn yourself out too much. But, um, so. I what's... have Brandon. Yeah. Brandon's like, <laughs> what do you mean you collapsed? <laughs> Wait, you, collapse? you can't die. You have to finish Starblazer first. That's exactly <laughs> you can't die. Oh my god. Oh, do you guys have plans on? You mentioned earlier that you wanted to branch out into other genres. Um, do you guys have plans of doing like anything from an RPG to a free, uh, an FPS, or do you want to stay around the RTS kind of vibe? Vibe. Vibe. Uh, vibe. no. So I'll make a bold claim, and I don't think Brando would disagree with me. I highly doubt we would ever do the same type of game twice. Uh, maybe, I think sequels are different, right? If 10 years from now we do a Star Blazer 2, I think that's different. Um, yeah. But for us, there's so many things that we want to try. Is I mean, we expect every game is going to be a pivot in something different. And so, you know, we've hit RTS, Virus Popper is our rail game. And then, you know, there's other genres out there, whether it's puzzle or FPS or... Art. <laughs> Art. Yeah. yeah. So you guys are planning on a new one, though, right? I'm not going to make you divulge the name, but there is another IP yeah. coming. Yeah, absolutely. So oh, for sure. Yeah. I'd say let's do another podcast in like two, three months. Bad. <laughs> You're in. Because I have the next month booked, so we're good. Yeah, two, three months. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. Um, Is it what you guys thought you'd be doing? Say you know, from back in high school or in college, did you guys think you'd be here? I don't think so. I <laughs> definitely not. No, yeah. I think that's the most interesting part of life is you just, when you see opportunities or if you see something that lights you up and you're passionate about, you have to chase it. I mean, I mean the, the most like instantiation of that to me is virus popper itself because the truth is if you asked us three months ago if we would have made some educational free rail game i'd be like no we've got all these other plans what are you talking about but, then, like, <laughs> but when it happens it happens and you just yeah. you have to do it and i don't think enough people like embrace letting life change your plans and then making the best of it yeah yeah that's good so for a younger developer who's just getting into the, the scene, what are your three biggest pieces of advice individually? This is a great question. I've never been asked this question. That's a good really? one. I thought that was yeah. like the most common no, question. Nobody's asked that. No one's asked that. First. <laughs> <laughs> that is no, I, I, I actually really specific. love that question. Okay. Well, yeah. let's hear it. I'll, let's go I think, think. <laughs> I'll go alphabetically. Alexander first. Okay. So I think the first thing is, if it is development, it's going to seem silly, but don't underestimate what you can learn online and what you can teach yourself. Because actually, I'm pretty much 100% self-taught, and uh, I don't think that's unachievable for anyone because there are so many resources online and available, so much information. Like, the last thing I'd want is 
some people are afraid to start a project because they feel like they don't have the background or the credentials. You know, they say, well, I went to school for blah, 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 or, well, I've never tried coding before. You know, I, oh, I don't know how to do that. And I think these are all just self limitations that people put on themselves. And if they take a step back, like we live in an amazing age where we just have this endless wealth of knowledge that is the internet. And there's so much that you can learn. I mean, even if you start with, okay, during your lunch break, or, you know, when you make a microwave dinner in the evening, um, when you go to watch a Twitch stream, maybe watch a tutorial or something like that. There's tons of them on YouTube and there's like little ways to start. And then the key is just start, <laughs> but yeah, don't, don't underestimate like, what you can self-teach and what you can learn. Okay, cool, cool. What about your second one? He said alphabetical, so that's you, Brandon. <laughs> oh, we're gonna go first three for each. a second, second. Oh, three each. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I think we should alternate. Let's take yeah. turns. Okay, okay. first, first, yeah. first, second, second, gotcha. Smart. Yeah. All right. I think a big one for mine is understand, like adaptability. I think we even, I think a lot of indie studios do this too. They get like an idea like end game idea and they're like they put all their eggs in one basket and then they just like ship it and then they're like then when it doesn't do well or something like that they become very defensive i think what we learn very early on is like you can't be defensive you have to be open to having those conversations you have to be open to critiques and it's super important that you know like you pivot and that's okay to pivot it's okay to adapt to the scenarios um and I think that is something that we hold like very true to ourselves still. Like sometimes we pivot too much, but you know, but like, I think people should be able to identify a situation and be like, do we keep on this track or do we need to change things up? And I think, I wish more people change things up. Um, I think that's how you get ahead. Cool. I mean, yeah, you, yep. you've got to be able to get up after getting punched. You can't just lay there on the ground and wonder why you got punched. <laughs> yeah yeah i not, okay. not gonna lie irl i have seen that it's weird okay so yeah go okay so my second one it's less on the inspirational side and more from just practicality and it seems obvious but i think it's critical to success and it's focus on the mvp or the bottleneck whatever you want to call it because I think the biggest trap developers can run into um, are the ones that are especially creative because we want to dive deep into the models and the art design and the worlds, but the technical parts of the game, the sometimes these are the things that I would say they scare you the most. Uh, for me, it's thinking about like back end multiplayer. I hate it, <laughs> but if that doesn't work, like you don't have a game, uh, no matter how pretty it is. And so for me, it's like nail that core gameplay and, and like really prioritize what do you need to do to sell the game and get it out there. Um, and for us, the way it came about in Star Blazer is we use Trello and in Trello is the best thing in the world because we have a backlog and then we pull the most important things off of the backlog. And what you'll find happens is as you really choose what the most important things are, you have a lot of stuff in your backlog that you'll probably never do. And while they're great ideas and great features, they're not what's going to make your game successful. It's the things that bubble up to the top. And so for us, I think that's really actually where we hit our stride was after Back South by focusing on the key things we really needed to do to get a core game, um, not letting all the other stuff distract us, which is so easy to do. <laughs> Right, right. So, like, less is more. Yeah. Almost. In a way. In a way. In a way. In a way. There's a balance. Yeah. yeah. You want to just not do anything on your backlog and see how big you can make it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, Brandon, what about you? I think the, another one is just, like, reach out. Uh, I think we still don't do this enough, and I try to push myself to do it more. It's just, like, we have a game. Like, you have a game or you have something you're creating. Like, show people and be, like, and just keep showing people and like try to have conversations about it like with other devs like i think we reach out to other devs and like hey you want to collaborate and i think we hear no most of the time and that's fine you know there's other things where we're like podcasts are a great one where we just like hey we'd love to be on and then 
either people are going to say yes or no. It's just like having those conversations and not holding back and getting nervous about having it, I think. Because, you know, it's like really easy to be like rejections, like hard, I think, for a lot of people. Um, but just get I think it's just like having a view of it and being like, if I get rejected, you know, that's not that's not the worst thing in the world. Not even having the conversation and not knowing that I could have had that experience like that's that's where you want to be. I think you want to get out there and be confident about it, I think. That's, that's funny that's that cool. you, you, you bring that up because in our first podcast, and I think in our second one too, um, it was brought up a lot that you you have to just apply for... Actually, the, the name of the first episode is Apply for Everything um, because he went in depth about why you should apply for everything and just like showing like... People will say, oh, what if I get rejected? It's like, well, that means nothing. Literally nothing's changed. So keep yeah. going. <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. I, I, yeah. I can't remember the exact way he put it, but in my plate was just like, if you don't apply for everything, don't even do anything. Or something like that. It was very inspirational. I immediately applied for a bunch of stuff and immediately got rejected for a bunch of stuff. But hey, it worked. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's that's. But, I, I, I like that it's brought up a lot. Yeah, but it only takes one. Like me and Alexander talk about this all the time. It only takes one thing these days. Like it really just takes one thing to like really push you over the edge. Like, you know, there's like so many algorithms out there and it's just like, it's insane how just one instance of one person doing one thing can put you over that edge. Um, yeah, and, so, and, and things change and, and you learn from it. I mean, one good example is I applied to HTC's uh, Vivex program, it's their accelerator, got rejected. They're actually very nice about it and they're, they're pretty coaching of like what they are looking for in a studio we didn't quite meet and I think that was fair. But then in reverse, a year later, HTC is reaching out to us about virus poppers said we saw you submit this to to um, our program and like we just want to meet the devs that did this and talk about your strategy and help y'all promote it and so that's the thing like things can always change and you just got to learn from the experiences that's cool we want to meet the devs oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 it was it was really cool that's awesome yeah so Alexander what's your third piece of advice third and final yeah, so my third one, it's gonna sound like I'm contradicting the second one, but it it because it's it's something that I learned from Brandon. I have to give him credit for. So if it's his third, too bad, <laughs> I get to go first. Um, but so I said focus on the MVP as my number two, and that's hugely important to be successful. But at the same time, something that I learned from Brandon is when you have those eureka moments of creativity, or if there's something you're super passionate about you should do it you should just do it because something good always comes from it and you know earlier in this podcast you talked about burnout and one of the ways that brandon helps me manage my burnout is he often suggests you know when i'm handling the heavy technical stuff sometimes i take a break and do the creative things and there's several examples of star blazer and well, shoot even virus popper is itself in this category but there's several examples where we were just super passionate and wanted to do something crazy. And then it ends up being like one of the things we love most in the game. Uh, one of the, the first time I think we really started leaning into this was the star raver lounge in star blazer. So that's the, that little club that's hidden in the back of the, the like uh, cabin yeah. <laughs> com command deck area. And that was created over a course of like a couple days. We just, just wanted to do it. I mean, it didn't have anything to do with spaceship strategy. Uh, it's just something that we really wanted to include in the game. And I have no regrets about that. It's like one of our favorite parts of the game. It's just, it's there. People love it. You can play Space Jenga and Space Pong. Like, why not? <laughs> and um, so I think, yeah, just encouragement that like, if you're feeling passionate about something, like you should go for it. Because if you love it, other people will too. And you'll do a better job on that than something you're less passionate about. So... Yeah, that was good advice. What about you, Brendan? That's a good one. Oh man, yeah, I know. That one. A, that's a really hard one to follow up on. Not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah, I totally. totally. And I stole it from him too. So that's like, oh, double whammy, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, man, that's hard. I don't know if I have any more because <laughs> we covered like five, and it's we work with each other really well. I think yeah, we can true. do one that. All right, we have a rule actually. So that's this is one. more. Uh, this is more if you're you're 
you're a duo, like, you know, there's like a lot of solo developers, but me and Alexander are a duo. Um, so there come some unique things that with that partnership. And so me and Alexander actually established a rule like pretty early on where only one of us can freak out at a time. So we're, it does, it's like someone takes the freak out card and they own it. So like if something happened with Starcade Arcade um, and me and Alexander, it's like very stressful. Only one of us is going to be able to freak out about it. And the other one has to talk through it with the other person. Um, and and I think... Card off? Oh, it, it is a... Yeah, it's... It, it, we I think we rarely do it, but it's just like um, when it does happen, it helps us so much. Like knowing that if someone else is having a harder time with something, we just try to talk through the through the issue, and you know, then we both actually I think come out way ahead because there's nothing that's like if something happens and we're both freaking out, we're not going to get through it. We're not going to be able to like navigate the situation in a smart, thoughtful way. Um, yeah. And since then, I think it's helped us both a lot. Yeah, no, it's pretty great. It's just kind of a dibs. Who, whoever like admits they're freaking out first gets to hold the conch, yeah, gotcha. <laughs> if you get the reference. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> and but it works because it also like I don't know. It it's an exercise in selflessness as well of like understanding what the other person's going through and in that act of just trying to be empathetic and being the listening ear, even if we were stressed out before. Um, having to put on that show to help the other person is actually beneficial because it calms us down too. Um, yeah. So it, it works well. It's like one of the best things we accidentally stumbled on. That's great. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's, yeah. that's a really good method. Honestly, yeah. like we, I do that a lot with, it, it's funny you bring that up because like, I remember as you were saying it, like a conversation I had with my, um, my girlfriend at the time. And, um, she was like, why do you never freak out? Why are you always so calm? Because then I told her, um, fiance now, by the way. Um, oh, congrats. Yeah, thank congrats. You. <laughs> Just need to make a lot of money so I can buy a good ring. No kidding. Um, I mean, yes, but no. We, I told her, if I freak out and you're freaking out, and we're both sitting here freaking out, then we went just wasted 10, 15 minutes that we could have been resolving yeah. the issue. And That's I told exactly her, correct. Yeah. I, and I, I hate wasting time. So <laughs> that that is like one of my core like ten like if there's like five things I hate is wasting time. Like that is like number two or one <laughs> for me. <laughs> Seriously, because it's like I will think about it for days afterwards. What could I have done with that extra 10, 15 minutes? And then yeah. end up accidentally wasting more time thinking about it. So yeah. <laughs> Yep. Rather not, rather just cut it right there. Just don't waste no time. What's going on? Let's let's get it resolved. And it, it's fixed a lot of things too. Because when you look at arguments, even between like just like fun little arguments or anything like that, the biggest thing that extends an argument or even a, a bad situation is people going back and forth with misinformation. Be just because they're so under stress. So if you mm -hmm. take one person and they're like, okay, the, the site went down. Right, the site went down. Site went down, site went down, site went down. That's all they're saying. The other person's like, okay, what caused the site went down? And they can't think properly. So they just keep saying it over and over and over and over again. Well, then you... And then the other person starts, oh, God, the site's down now. We don't even know what happened. And they just keep repeating, I don't know what took the site down. I don't know what took the site down. You look at that and you're like, oh, shit. Neither one of them are communicating because they're just repeating what they're saying. Yeah, so it's and a then, downward spiral. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So having one person call me like, okay, cool. The site's down. Yeah. All right. Let's, let's let's fix it. Right. Creating an action afterwards. Um, I always found it to really help out with people when they're freaking out, or when I'm freaking out. Someone tells me what to do, and I'm like, all right, cool, I'm good. <laughs> because otherwise, I'm just good. sitting there like. Mm. So, going on from that, what are you guys' plans for 2020? What do you guys want to get done in this year? Yeah, this year, like we definitely want to be completed on star blazer that's uh we're pretty close this last patch it's meant to hit like all the last of the big bugs and add some layer of polish and while we don't see star blazers ever done to be honest like we always want to add content to it um we do think there's a certain milestone to where you can say this is a full game this is a playable full game right and um, that's when we would also release it on some of the other stores, which might help us financially, fingers crossed. 
so for us that's a huge milestone and you know we're hoping to hit that within the next few months and then with that completing you know we would be looking at announcing and really diving into the next title and the next next production and so hopefully before the end of the year you're starting to see some rumblings about that <laughs> i'm excited man i'm excited um yep. well we've hit our hour mark so is there any other final remarks you guys want to let the community know any little easter eggs or hints mm, I'm, I'm kidding not so much hints <laughs> but i uh, we just appreciate everyone that you know has spent all the time with us during these couple of years that we've been out like we appreciate all the feedback we appreciate all the likes retweets follows even just playing our game or sharing our game like we know vr is a small niche community and we appreciate all of that feedback and we just hope we can create more games that make y'all happy yeah i can't say it better than that awesome sauce well ladies and gentlemen all the links to their socials uh discord and the steam link to their game and everything else will be down in the description below. So if you guys want to check it out, do so today. Otherwise, I will uh, steal your left shoe. Okay? Got it. <laughs> uh, He's a professional, we swear. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it, ladies and gentlemen. We're out. Thanks.